Hello guys, welcome back to a new video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do this really cool game themed header. Kind of like this one, uh, you can see the writing on the wall, you can see um, uh, the colour correction. I've added colour correction just to make it more intense. And uh, yeah, there's some other stuff that I'm going to show you how to do. And also I'm going to show you how to do this text behind the person. I didn't have it like um, out at the start just because I didn't think it worked too well on this picture. But uh, it, does work, uh, it does work well on a lot of other pictures so I just thought I'd show you guys how to do it. And uh, yeah, so let's get into it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to File New, just to start a new project. The the Twitter, the dimensions for a Twitter header are 1,500 by 500. But um, if you're doing it for like a YouTube channel art, you might need to download a template or something from YouTube or from Google or somewhere. But uh, yeah, uh, we're gonna design it for a Twitter header. So uh, these are the dimensions for a Twitter header. And just press OK. And now we've got our picture from Google. So as you can see here. All you literally need to do is type in the game that the game that it is, and then um, cinematic after it. So if you type in Cisco cinematic, you get all of these really cool pictures. And um, if you typed in Black Ops three, oh, not Black Ops four. If you typed in Black Ops three cinematic, you get um, a lot of good photos here as well. So uh, yeah, but for this uh, for this tutorial, we are going to be doing CS:GO. So once you do that, we're just going to drag it in, and so now we've got a picture in our Twitter header. Uh, project, but now what we're going to do is we're going to drag it out. So by holding Shift and Alt, we can just drag out the edges. So just so it fills up the whole entire uh, artboard. There we go. And um, so yeah, now we got it to fit. And now you can see that it's a bit grainy, but that's just because of the the picture quality. And um, to fix that, we can use Topaz Labs, which is right here. If you don't have this, then you can just skip the step, as um, not all photos need it. But what I find with Topaz Labs is that um, it kind of adds, it just makes it look a bit more realistic. And uh, yeah, it makes it look a lot cooler. As you can see, um, I can show you the difference. So um, so yeah, so this is what it's like when it's been processed. I'm using JPEG Lite and these are just the last settings I use. So you can just copy these. Most of these are default, uh, well all of them should be default besides the overall strength. But um, you can see this is what it was like and then this is what it's like process like after um, after we've edited it in Topaz Labs. If you don't have, like I said before, if you don't have this plugin, you can skip it, although I do recommend using it and um, I do use it for quite a lot of my projects. And okay, so we just uh, press confirm and in the bottom right corner, it will process it and do all of that kind of stuff. And now what we're going to do is we're going to right click on our background image or the image of the game. We're going to right click and then go to rasterize layer. That just means that we don't have to process the image every time we move it or anything like that. Okay, so now we've done our Topaz Labs and it looks all really uh, realistic and all that. We're going to duplicate our image layer just by pressing Command J or Control J if you're on a PC. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to go to Filter, make sure you have the top one selected. I'm going to go to Filter, Blur and then Gaussian Blur. And um, for this I think probably about 2.3 or 2.4 would be pretty good for them for this image obviously your image might vary but uh, yeah so um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our eraser tool and we're gonna erase the objects that are closest to the camera uh, so we're not gonna erase the back wall we're gonna we are going to erase these people and these boxes and um, you'll see it adds a really cool perspective effect and um, and yeah it really turns out really well and um, but make sure you have the selectors that we added the blur to uh, make sure you have that layer selected just so you, you're not erasing any layers that you don't want to be erased. So let's just erase the person just by using eraser tool. You don't need to be too precise. You just want to go over it really quick. You can take more time into it, I suppose, but it really does matter. You you're not really going to notice the difference if you're like go over like a corner just a bit. Um, but if you do mess mess up, you can just press Command Z and that will undo it. Uh, if you don't want to get if you do want to get really really like in detailed with your with your um, your blurs you can change the opacity so for objects that are really close you'd use a really low opacity brush and for objects that are further away you'd go higher up just so there'd be just just so there'd be more blur than the objects in front right in front of you and yeah that's a really cool effect too so let's just go over this person real quick and then the last thing we'll do is this wall right here and you can see like it kind of gradually goes into a, a blur and we'll do this roof bit and then this floor just the bottom bit of the floor okay that looks really cool we've got this nice um, perspective effect going on 
And uh, now what we're going to do is we can select both of those layers by pressing shift and clicking on both of them. We want to duplicate them again by pressing command J and then merging them by pressing command E. So now we've basically put both of those layers onto one layer and um, yeah. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make the backlight or any lights that you might have in your photo more outstanding because it just adds to the intensity of the photo. So to do that we want to make a new layer just by pressing on this uh, create new layer icon in the bottom right corner and go to our brush tool uh, which is right here or you can press B on your keyboard and um, make sure the size is about 50 it does well it depends on the size of the brush uh, or I mean uh, the size of the light and then we want to make sure that your color is white and then we can zoom in a little just to be a bit more precise and then you just want to click on the light and there we go it just it just makes it look more foggy and uh, just look a lot more cooler. Obviously, it's just the backlight. It really doesn't matter. But it, I, in my opinion, it looks cool. And uh, you can set that to color dodge as well. And um, that'll make it look a lot more realistic as well. And yeah. So now that we've done that, we are going to um, we're going to add our color correction. So to do that, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add curves. And now what we're going to we're going to do an S shaped curve. So just uh, just drag out the bottom bit and then drag out the top. And as you can see, it really looks, you're making it look a lot more intense, which is the theme of this picture. You can see it's just two guys going down the hallway and it's a really intense scene. So we're just going to emphasize that. So now we've made this S-shaped curve and now we're going to turn the blending option to luminosity. And there we go. We can also lower the opacity just a little if, if we wanted to as well. And now we're going to add a brightness and contrast. So just go to this icon up here. Oh, but by the way, if you don't have this adjustments tab right here, just go to window and adjustments and it's right there. And uh, okay, so we're just gonna increase the brightness a little bit and then increase the contrast and maybe increase the brightness a bit more. Okay, that's really cool. So now we've done that, we've got our color correction sorted out and uh, now we're gonna add our text. So like I said before, I'm gonna show you two versions. One version is where it's like on the wall and then another version where it goes kind of behind the person. And uh, yeah, so to do, I'm going to show you the on the wall version first. And uh, I think I'm going to erase a bit more. Actually, you no. Know, okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're just going to type out our name just by using the type tool, which is over here, or you can press T on your keyboard. And it's going to actually just put text. Okay, and the font we're using is called Unisand. You can just Google it and find that for yourself. And uh, okay, so we're going to move our text to over to where we want it to be. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to edit. Make sure, wait, before you do this, you need to make sure that you've come out of this text editing mode. So to, to make sure you've done that, you just want to press on this tick in the top. And now uh, the only way of editing it again is by clicking on it using the type tool. But, um, so once we come out of the editing, I'm going to go to edit and then perspective warp and just press OK. And that, that rasterizes your layer. So that means that you can't edit it anymore. So make sure you do check all your spellings and all that before you do this. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're just going to make a rectangle over your text, just like that. And then press enter on your keyboard. And then it does have the step-by-step -step guide, but I'm just going to teach you how to do it anyway. And now we can just drag these points to match the wall, uh, just like this. And then drag out this last point. And now you can see it's on the wall. And uh, it, it's a really cool effect. I quite like it. And you can just mess around, see uh, what way works the best. I might have to look a bit closer, actually. Um, okay, there we go. So now it's literally on the wall, and uh, yeah. So now we can add our bl uh, um, our layer style to it. So to do that, we can double click on our layer, and we get all of these options right here. I normally like to add a gradient, just like that, and then a drop shadow. And uh, yeah, you can just copy these uh, for my gradient. I always set the blending mode to multiply, uh, but make sure this is black to white. And uh, so you can just click that and then press OK and then lower the opacity a bit. So uh, we say probably about 60 works well. And then our drop shadow settings are um, distance is 0, spread is 24 and then size is 46. You only really need a distance if you have um, a light shining on an object and then, and then the drop shadow will be a bit further away. And uh, so yeah, that looks cool. And then we we'll press OK, and then we're going to set the blending option to overlay. And there we go. It, 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 what, the, what overlay does is it gets all the colors that are behind the, the text layer, 
and it brings them in front and uh, yeah I think I'm just gonna rotate it just a bit and there we go it looks really cool and uh, we got a text on the wall and uh, this is, is I quite like that technique I um, I don't use it a lot just because the opportunity doesn't really present itself a lot but especially in these um, in these kind of gaming kind of style headers they work really really well okay so now I'm going to show you how to position the text as if it's coming from behind his behind his back and uh, you could also use this technique to make it so it's kind of on the floor behind him but uh, like I said earlier this isn't a very good picture for this example because there is another person and it the text will be covering um, go over, going over him okay so to do this we need to type our we're just going to type our text again so we're just going to type text and uh, we're not going to do any of the layer style options right now because uh, um, because we can do that after so we're just going to move our text to one side and now we want to select our background layer so the layer that has the image that you want to the, that you want the text to go behind. So um, now we want to go to our lasso tool, which is right here, and um, you could pen tool this to make it a lot more precise. But for the sake of this tutorial, you can just use the lasso tool, and um, it, you won't really you won't notice a difference at all because uh, we could also use the eraser tool after just to get rid of the access like little bits that we don't want. So now we just want to go over his back because that's where we want the, the text, the words to come out of. So just want to go over his back. We don't need to go over his whole body, and then we can just cut across, and then just let go. And now we can just press Command J, and what that basically does is we duplicated his back. And if you can see a bit of the background here, and you don't want that, and you want it to be really precise, you can just go to your eraser tool, which is right here, or you can press E on your keyboard, and then you want to right click, and then go make sure your hardness is on 100%, and then you can just erase the little black bits. And just like this, and then we've got one more there. And okay, so now we've got no excess space, and now we can show our background layer. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't know that there is this back here because it is basically the same, the same image. Okay, so now I want to go back to our text layer, which is right here. Just gonna drag it to where it would coming would be coming out of his back, and then you just want to drag the layer below uh, the back, and there you can see. Let me just just change the color a bit, just so it's a bit easier to see. So let's change it to maybe okay, a grey. Okay. And now you can see that it's kind of coming out of his back. And it looks really cool. And uh, yeah, this, like I said before, like twice already, <laughs> uh, this image doesn't really work well just because it, you're covering the other person's face. But um, it does work in a lot of other images. And um, if you wanted to make it look really realistic, you can use our brush tool, which is right here. Make sure you're doing this on the new layer, so you must click on the new layer icon. And then change our foreground color to a black. And then we can just add a shadow behind the person, and there we go. It looks like the um, the person is casting a shadow onto the text, and it looks really cool. And we can also just copy and paste this this layer style onto this layer style, just by right clicking on this layer style, which is right here, and uh, just right click, then go to copy layer style, then go to this text and press paste layer style, and there we go. Uh, obviously, the overlay probably won't work as well. And there we go, we just basically copied the, the layer style over. And that's how you do a really cool game themed Twitter header. So if you did enjoy this tutorial, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video.